Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's English episode. In this episode, we'll be focusing on English conversation. Listening to English conversations is an essential part of improving your language skills. It can help you enhance your listening, speaking, and comprehension abilities. So sit back and enjoy our conversation. Let's get started. Here's a structured format for a podcast style conversation about coming back to one's hometown with a dramatic flair. This will also include a proper introduction and an explanation of how it helps in learning English. Welcome back to Voices of Journey, the podcast where we dive deep into the stories that shape our lives. I'm John, your host. And I'm Emily. Today, we have a very special episode for you. We'll be talking about the bittersweet experience of returning to your hometown after many years away. It's a topic that touches the heart and brings up so many emotions. That's right, Emily. Coming back to a place filled with old memories can be both comforting and unsettling. In this episode, we'll explore those feelings through our own stories and discuss how these experiences have shaped us. So grab a cup of tea, sit back, and join us as we take you on a journey back home. Emily, do you remember the first time you went back to your hometown after being away for so long? Oh, John, how could I forget? It was a cold winter evening. The town looked exactly the same, yet everything felt different. The streets were quiet, covered in a soft blanket of snow, and the old oak tree at the park still stood tall, just like it did when we were kids. Wow, that sounds like a scene out of a movie. For me, it was a hot summer day. The moment I stepped off the bus, I was hit by the familiar smell of fresh cut grass and the distant sound of children playing. But something inside me felt uneasy, like I was a stranger in a place that used to be home. It's strange, isn't it, how the place can stay the same, but we change so much. I walked past my old school and remembered all those days spent dreaming about leaving. Now, here I was back again, but as a different person. Exactly. I walked past my favorite cafe, the one where we used to hang out after school. It was still there, with the same old sign and the same cozy chairs. But when I walked in, it felt like a different place. The faces were different, the conversations were different. It made me realize how much time had passed. It's like you're visiting a ghost town of your own memories. Everything is familiar yet foreign. I think that's what makes coming back so dramatic. It's a mix of nostalgia and a reminder of how far we've come. And that's what we'll be exploring more in this episode. The layers of emotions, the unexpected encounters, and how these experiences shape our understanding of home. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into our stories and discuss what it really means to come back. Before we continue with our stories, we want to take a moment to explain how listening to podcasts like this one can help you improve your English. Yes, podcasts are a fantastic tool for language learners. They help you improve your listening skills, familiarize you with natural conversation flow, and expose you to new vocabulary and expressions. By listening to our conversations, you'll hear how native speakers naturally use intonation, stress, and rhythm. It's also a great way to learn how to express complex emotions and stories in English. Plus, it's an engaging way to learn. You're not just memorizing words and rules. You're hearing them used in real-life contexts. And because our episodes are long, you get plenty of practice in each session. So let's get back to our journey home. And remember, if you ever miss something, you can always pause, rewind, and listen again. Ready, John? All right, where were we? Ah, uh, yes, the moment of stepping back into those familiar, yet strangely new places. John, did you reconnect with any old friends when you went back? Actually, I did. I met up with Sam, my old high school buddy. We hadn't seen each other in years. Meeting him again felt like a collision of past and present. We decided to meet at our favorite pizza place 
the one where we spent countless evenings debating everything from music to our future dreams. That must have been something. Did it feel like no time had passed? Or was it awkward at first? A bit of both, to be honest, at first, it was like meeting a stranger with a familiar face. But as we talked, the years seemed to melt away. We reminisced about our antics, laughed about the same old jokes, and it was comforting. Yet, there was an underlying current of change. We were both different people now, with different lives and experiences. That's the essence of coming back, isn't it? It's about reconciling the past with the present. I had a similar experience when I visited my old neighborhood. I ran into Mrs. Thompson, our next door neighbor. She was like a second mother to me. Seeing her brought back a flood of memories, but it also highlighted how much I had grown since those days. Absolutely. It's a bittersweet realization. You see the people and places that shaped you, but you also see how you've outgrown them in some ways. It's a testament to personal growth. It really is, and sometimes, the places themselves change. The old bakery where I used to buy cookies after school had turned into a trendy cafe. It was nice, but it wasn't the same. It made me nostalgic for the simplicity of my childhood. Yes, that's a big part of it. The physical place changes, and so do we. But those changes don't erase the memories. They just add no layers to them. Every visit back home becomes a new chapter in our ongoing story. And speaking of stories, do you have any particular memory from your hometown that stands out as especially dramatic or impactful? One memory that stands out is the summer of 98. It was the year we almost lost the old community center. I remember there was a huge storm and the river nearby flooded. Everyone came together to save it. That sense of community spirit was something I hadn't experienced in a long time, living in a big city. I remember that storm. It was terrifying, but it was also incredible to see how everyone rallied together. It's moments like those that remind us of the strength and resilience within our communities. Exactly. Those shared experiences bond us in ways that time and distance can't break. And revisiting them helps us reconnect with a part of ourselves that we might have forgotten. So true, John. And for our listeners, reflecting on such experiences can also help you practice your English. Try writing down your own memories or sharing them with a friend. It's a great way to build your vocabulary and improve your storytelling skills. That's a fantastic idea, Emily. Now, let's delve deeper into some more stories and the emotions they bring up. We'll talk about what it's like to see old teachers, revisit favorite childhood spots, and how these experiences shape our identities. So, John, let's talk about revisiting those childhood spots that hold so many memories. Was there a particular place in your hometown that you felt a strong connection to? Definitely. For me, it was the old treehouse in the woods behind my house. My friends and I spent countless hours there, imagining it as everything from a pirate ship to a space station. Going back there as an adult, it looked so small and fragile, but it was like stepping into a time machine. The treehouse sounds magical. It's amazing how places from our childhood can hold such powerful memories. For me, it was the small local library. I remember spending hours there getting lost in books. It was my sanctuary. That's beautiful, Emily. Libraries have that timeless quality. Did it change much when you went back? Surprisingly, not much. The same librarian was there, Mrs. Green, now with a few more gray hairs. She recognized me instantly and we had a wonderful chat about how the town had evolved it felt like no time had passed at all. That's heartwarming. It's like finding an anchor in a sea of change. Speaking of people, did you encounter any old teachers or mentors who had an impact on you? Yes, I did. I ran into Mr. Roberts, my high school English teacher. He was the one who inspired my love for literature. 
We talked about the books we read and how those stories influenced my life choices. It was a poignant reminder of how a good teacher can shape your path. Teachers like Mr. Roberts are truly special. I met Mrs. Harris, my old math teacher, at a community event. She remembered how I struggled with calculus and laughed about how I ended up in a career that barely uses it. It was a humbling experience, realizing the patience and effort she put into teaching us. It's a testament to their dedication, and it's also a reminder of the importance of gratitude. We often forget to thank the people who've guided us along the way. Absolutely, and these encounters are more than just nostalgic. They're also reflective. They help us see how far we've come and acknowledge the people who've been part of our journey. Exactly. For our listeners, reflecting on your own mentors and places of significance can be a great exercise. It not only helps you practice your English, but also reconnects you with your personal history. Yes. Try writing a letter to an old teacher or visiting a place that was special to you as a child. It's a wonderful way to improve your language skills while also indulging in a bit of self-discovery. Beautifully said, John. Now, let's move on to a lighter note. Do you remember any funny or quirky stories from your hometown that you can share? Oh, I have plenty. One that comes to mind is the annual duck race. Every summer, the town would release hundreds of rubber ducks down the river for a charity event. It was chaotic and hilarious, especially when people would dress up their ducks in little costumes. Did your town have any quirky traditions like that? Not quite a duck race, but we had the annual pie eating contest. It was a huge event, and everyone participated. One year, I decided to join in, thinking I could easily win. Let's just say it didn't go as planned, and I ended up covered in blueberry pie. That's fantastic. These quirky traditions are what make our hometowns unique and memorable. They bring people together in the most delightful ways. Exactly, and they provide a treasure trove of stories and memories to share. For our listeners, think about the unique traditions or events from your own hometown. Sharing these stories can be a fun and engaging way to practice speaking English. Yes, and it helps build a connection with others. We all have those little quirks that make our hometown special. As we wrap up this segment, remember to embrace those memories, both the dramatic and the lighthearted. They're all part of what makes our journey so rich. We shared some heartwarming and funny stories about revisiting our hometowns. Now, let's dive into the emotions that come with these experiences and how they shape our identities. That's right, Emily. Coming back to a place filled with memories often stirs up a mix of emotions. It can be overwhelming, comforting, and sometimes even unsettling. For instance, when I visited my childhood home, I felt a profound sense of nostalgia. Every corner of that house held a story. I know what you mean. There's something about being in a place where you spent so much of your formative years. For me, visiting my childhood home brought back a flood of memories, some happy, some bittersweet. It's like the walls themselves were whispering the past. Exactly. And it's not just the physical place, but also the people. Reconnecting with old friends and family can be a deeply emotional experience. It reminds you of the bonds that have shaped who you are. Yes, and it's interesting how these experiences can change our perspective. For example, I used to see my hometown as this small, uneventful place that I was eager to leave. But coming back after so many years, I saw it in a new light. I appreciated its charm, its community, and its simplicity. That's a great point. Distance and time often give us a new perspective. When I moved away, I was excited about the opportunities and the adventure of living in a big city. But coming back home made me realize how much I valued the sense of belonging and the slower pace of life. It's like rediscovering a part of yourself. And for our listeners, this is a great topic to explore in your own language practice. 
Reflecting on how your perspective has changed over time can help you articulate complex thoughts and emotions in English. Definitely. Try writing a journal entry about your feelings when you visit a familiar place after a long time. Describe the sights, sounds, and emotions. It's a great way to practice descriptive language and introspection. Or even better, share your story with a friend or a language partner. Talking about your experiences can help you practice conversational skills and build confidence in expressing personal narratives. Absolutely. And remember, it's okay to feel a mix of emotions. Returning home can be both joyous and melancholic. It's all part of the journey. Speaking of journeys, John, have you ever had an experience where returning home changed a significant decision or a path in your life? Actually, yes. There was a time when I was considering a big career change. I felt lost and uncertain. Visiting my hometown and reconnecting with old friends and family gave me the clarity I needed. Their support and the familiar surroundings helped me realize what truly mattered to me. That's powerful, John. Sometimes, grounding ourselves in our roots can give us the strength and perspective to move forward. It's like finding a compass when we're lost. Exactly. And for our listeners, think about a time when going back to your roots helped you make a significant decision. Reflecting on these moments can provide valuable insights and help you articulate your thoughts more clearly in English. That's wonderful advice, John. As we wrap up this episode, we encourage all of you to embrace your personal journeys, the highs and the lows, and use them as a tool for learning and growth. Those spontaneous meetings can be so impactful. It's amazing how reconnecting with someone from your past can bring back a flood of memories and even rekindle old friendships. Did you end up catching up with your classmate? Yes, we did. We ended up having lunch and reminiscing about our school days. It was interesting to see how much we had both changed and yet, how much we still had in common. It made me appreciate the deep connections we formed during our formative years. That's wonderful, John. For me, the biggest surprise was discovering how much my hometown had evolved. New businesses had sprung up, the local park had been renovated, and there was a vibrant energy that wasn't there before. It felt like a blend of the old and the new. That's a great point, Emily. Towns and cities do change over time, often in ways that reflect broader social and economic shifts. Seeing those changes can be both exciting and a little disorienting. It can be, and for our listeners, Noticing these changes and reflecting on them can be an excellent exercise for practicing English. Try describing the changes in your hometown and how they make you feel. It's a great way to practice descriptive language and express complex emotions. Absolutely. And speaking of changes, one of the most emotional aspects of returning home is seeing how our families have changed. For instance, Seeing my younger cousins all grown up was a real eye-opener. They were kids when I left, and now they're starting their own lives. That's a profound experience. Family dynamics shift over time, and it can be both heartwarming and bittersweet to see those changes. When I visited, I noticed how much my parents had aged. It was a stark reminder of the passage of time and the importance of cherishing moments with loved ones. Yes. Those moments are precious, and they remind us to stay connected, even when we're far away. For our listeners, think about your own family experiences. Writing or talking about how your family has changed over the years can help you practice narrative skills and reflect on personal growth. Exactly, John. And let's not forget the emotional landscape of visiting places tied to our memories. For example, going back to the park where I had my first kiss was a surprisingly emotional experience. The place looked the same, but I was different, and it made me reflect on how much I've grown since then. That's a powerful reflection, Emily. Places like that hold emotional significance, and revisiting them can be a way to measure personal growth. For our listeners, try visiting a place 
that holds special memories and reflect on how it makes you feel now. It's a great way to practice expressing complex emotions in English. That's a powerful reflection, Emily. Places like that hold emotional significance and revisiting them can be a way to measure personal growth. For our listeners, try visiting a place that holds special memories and reflect on how it makes you feel now. It's a great way to practice expressing complex emotions in English. Absolutely, and these reflections not only help improve your language skills, but also deepen your understanding of yourself. It's all part of the journey of learning and growing. Well said, Emily. As we bring this episode to a close, we encourage all of you to embrace the emotions and experiences of revisiting your past. Use them as a tool for learning and personal growth. We've explored the nostalgia and change that come with revisiting familiar places, the joy and surprise of reconnecting with old friends, and the bittersweet realization of how much time has passed. These experiences remind us of our roots and help us understand our journey in a deeper way. That's right, John. These reflections not only enrich our personal lives, but also serve as valuable tools for learning English. By talking about our experiences, describing places and emotions, and sharing stories, we practice essential language skills in a meaningful context. Exactly. For our listeners, we encourage you to keep reflecting on your own journeys. Write about them, talk about them, and use these reflections to practice your English. Remember, language learning is not just about memorizing words and grammar. It's about communicating your thoughts, feelings, and stories. And don't forget to stay connected with your roots. Whether it's visiting your hometown, reconnecting with old friends, or simply reminiscing about the past, these experiences shape who we are and help us grow. Thank you for joining us on this heartfelt journey. We hope our stories and reflections have resonated with you and inspired you to explore your own memories. Keep using these experiences as a way to improve your English and deepen your understanding of yourself. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep sharing your story. Remember, every journey is unique and worth sharing. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Take care and see you in our next episode. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel.